Instead of memorizing a bunch of intervals and all of the half steps that gets to all of them, what if you only had to memorize three? What if three intervals was all it took to get to all of the most common intervals you would encounter? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how you can use perfect intervals and either half steps and whole steps beyond that to get to all of the most common intervals you'll encounter. Today we'll look at how to determine the quality of intervals, so major, minor, and perfect. Uh, and this is super helpful to understand the distance between pitches in a melody. And it gets even more fun when discussing the quality of intervals when looking at chords and harmonies. Today I'm gonna to show you all the tips and tricks I've been using to teach hundreds of students about interval quality. Today we're gonna to focus on major, minor, and perfect intervals, which are by far the most common types of intervals you'll encounter. We're gonna focus on augmented and diminished intervals in another video, so hang tight. Uh, but today we're gonna to make perfect, major, and minor intervals super easy to understand. And throughout the video, I'm gonna have a bunch of practice exercises we can do together to make sure you're on track understanding all of these tips and tricks. And for hanging out with me today, I have a free music theory survival guide. Just go to joshring.com slash free. It has all of these intervals that we're gonna be talking about and a whole lot more. I think you'll find it super helpful. All right, let's start with breaking down the five types that we have when we talk about interval quality. All right, so the main two types are perfect and major. And from there, we can modify things. So if we lower a major interval, we're going to get a minor interval. Uh, but if we lower a perfect or a minor interval, we're going to end up with a diminished, right? So the first time you lower perfect, you get to diminished, but you have to lower a major interval twice to get to diminished. Or if you raise a perfect or a major interval, you're going to end up with an augmented interval. And we're gonna focus on just perfect majors and minors for this video. We're gonna look at augmented and diminished in another video. So let's start with our perfect intervals, which will be our firsts, our fourths and fifths, and then our eighths. Uh, so to start, our ones are really just our unison note, right? So we're just staying on that C, the same note. Our octaves are, are going to be the eights, right? So octave, oct, standing for eights. So there's our octave. We could also go beyond that and have two octaves, which would get us this uh, P15, perfect 15th. Which is why you might sometimes see uh, this AVA, which means play that one octave higher, one octave above, or sometimes you might see this 15 MA, which is uh, the fancy way of saying we're gonna play that two octaves above, right? So that 15 again being the perfect 15th, the two octaves above. But for now, let's just focus on things up to an octave. Uh, so uh, to start with, let's backtrack and look at the order of flats and sharps. So here I have the order of flats in order from left to right, but again, the sharps are just the opposite order, right? So the sharps would be from right to left. Uh, so all of these are actually perfect intervals if they have the same accidentals, right? So this B to E is gonna be perfect. Uh, so let's unpack that for a minute. So, so it's B up to an E. B up to E would be a perfect interval, but B down to E would also be perfect. Uh, so there I have the B up to E is actually a perfect fourth. And again, from our last video, we know that that's going to be an even number because it's going from a line to a space, so they're different. Whereas we know that this is going to be a perfect fifth, it's gonna be an odd because it's line to line. Anything that's line to line is gonna be an odd number. Same thing, anything that's a space to space is going to be odd. So don't forget that little trick from the last video. So this is still true even if we change the accidental. So B flat to E flat, they still have the same accidental, so that's still perfect force. Or even this B flat down to E flat, right? That's still a perfect fifth, right? So there's having the same accidental. So even if we put sharps on it, which would be a little weird, but we could do that. We could have sharps and sharps and there's gonna still be perfect intervals. Uh, when they have different accidentals, they are suddenly not perfect. And we're not, we're not gonna worry about what they are right now, but just know these are not perfect anymore because the accidentals are different. And that's the main point I wanna get across and why I'm starting with the order of flats and sharps. Any note that is right next to itself, as long as they have the same accidental, so flats to flat or sharp to sharp or natural to natural, all of these on down the line are going to be perfect intervals. This is also the circle of fifths. So if you know your circle of fifths really well, you also know all of the perfect intervals. The difference is when we get to the very end, when we get from F to B, this is the only exception to this rule. F to B is not perfect, that we have to change something. Uh, so to make it perfect, we're gonna have to have one note higher than the other. So the B to F sharp is actually going to be our perfect interval, or the B flat to F is the perfect. So the F is always on top is, is gonna be an accidental higher. So that's what I mean by natural is gonna be one step higher gets us to a sharp, or flat one fl step higher than a flat gets us to a natural. So again, the B to the F is the one exception to the rule. You have to change one of the accidentals to make it perfect, but all of the others are going to be perfect, 
right? Uh, so even on the circle of fifths here, we can see that's why the B flats to F is next to each other or that F sharp to B, those are perfect. And on down the circle of fifths we go, all of those are perfect intervals. Uh, so let's practice this before we jump into major and minor. Let's just practice our perfect intervals. Uh, so I have a note here, I have a D, and I want it to be a fourth. So the first thing we're gonna do is go up four and figure out what note that is. So that means that D goes up to a G. And I know that's already perfect because it's on the order of flats and sharps. It's already next to each other. I don't have to change anything. And I could do the same thing if I started at the G and wanted to go up a fifth. If I G uh, went up to fifth, again, always starting with one uh, as the note you're on. So G is one on up to the D, there's our fifth. Again, those are perfect as is. Let's just do one other one. So we have this A flat. If I wanted to go up a fifth, I would count A flat as one and on up the line we would go until we got to five would be the E flat. And again, since E and A are next to each other on the order of flats and sharps or next to each other on the circle of fifths, I know they have to have the same accidental. And so since the A had a flat, that means the E needs a flat as well to be perfect. Uh, and I could do the same kind of thing. A down a fourth would get me to the E, right? And again, they both need the flats. Uh, and you might notice, again, uh, this order of flats and sharps or the circle of fifths, all of these are going to be fifths and fourths as long as they are next to each other. All right, so looking at our major scale here, right? And again, we have our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight as scale degrees, but here we could also think of it as intervals if we're starting with the C note, all right? So the C to any exact C is gonna be our perfect one, our unison. The fourth and fifth scale degrees are going to be perfect as well in the major scale. And then we have then the octave, the top note of the scale, as our perfect eighth, right? So first, fourth, fifth, and eighth note of any major scale is automatically perfect. That just leaves us with the major intervals are the, the second, the third, sixth, and seventh notes, right? So the C up to D, there's your major second, C up to E is your major third, C up to A is your major sixth, and your C up to B is your major seventh, right? So, so all of them that are not perfect are going to be the major intervals in your major scale. Go figure that, right? Uh, so here we have the uh, second, third, sixth, and seventh intervals. So the first really cool trick with these, if you go a whole step above these perfect intervals, you're gonna end up on the major intervals. And this is super helpful when you are in less comfortable keys or less comfortable intervals that you're working with. So you have the C from that unison going up a whole step gets you down to the major second. Or if you have that perfect fifth going up a whole step above that gets you to your major sixth. Just watch out, you can't go a whole step above your perfect fourth, you just end up back on your perfect fifth. All right, so it's really the whole step above the firsts and fifths. You could also do the same kind of thing of half step below some of these perfects. So half step below the perfect fourth gets you to your major third or half step below your perfect octave gets you to your major seventh, right? Just watch out, you can't do the perfect fifth uh, then down a half step because that doesn't get you a major interval. So it's really below the perfect fourth and the perfect octave. All right, so uh, really handy if you're in less comfortable keys or working with really uh, foreign notes. So a really easy trick to get to all of the major intervals. Before we start practicing this more, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me spread the word so I can keep helping as many people as possible. So let's actually practice these major intervals before we jump into the minor intervals. So first, uh, let's just say I give you an E flat and I want you to go a major second up, right? So major second up would just be a whole step. So E flat would then go up to F, right? So a whole step above following that neat little trick we had. What if I wanted to go a major third up, right? So I got to go the B, up to D sharp. Or really, if you use that cool trick of the B up to the E would be the perfect fourth, then a half step below that, that gets us to our major third. So another way to get there. Uh, let's do the, the major seventh, right? So uh, first we would then think, uh, well, the octave, that'd be our E to E. Half step below would get us to the D sharp. And with this major seventh here, this is the exact method I teach to help students add major sevenths two chords, so you use this often, just a half step down from what would kind of be the root of the chord would get your major seventh. Uh, what about a major sixth above D flat, right? So you could count it up through the D flat major scale, or you could think, oh, A and D are next to each other on the circle of fifths, order of flats and sharps. Uh, so that means D flat's gonna go to A flat would be your perfect fifth. Now I need to go a whole step above A flat, so it just gets us to the B flat. Or this major sixth here is the exact method I would use to 
have add six chords or add thirteens to your chords, right? Just go a whole step above the fifth of the chord. And this might seem a little counterintuitive, a roundabout way to get there, but I promise the more you do this, it becomes second nature and you get really fast at doing it. And then all your intervals just kind of fall into place because you're using your perfect intervals, which are so easy as your starting place. All right, so let's dive into our minor intervals. Right. Uh, so again, we mentioned that if you lower a major interval, you get up with a minor interval. So again, you cannot lower a perfect interval ever to become minor. Uh, perfects will just go straight to diminish. But major, we lower, we can get to minor intervals. So again, our, we start with our major intervals. We're going to lower all of them by a half step. Now we have our minor intervals, right? And actually, most of these notes are just the notes of like the C natural minor scale. The one exception is actually this D flat. Right, so it's mostly a minor scale. We just have this friendly D flat in the mix, and if you know your modes, this is actually the Phrygian mode. Uh, the Phrygian having that flat two as well. Uh, so it's mostly natural minor. So then the the trick we're using before of going above and below perfect intervals uh, still works with minor. We just have to do it a little backwards, right? So now instead of going a whole step above to get a major interval, we're only going to go half step above, right? So that C up to D flat. There's your half step, uh, or that C to G. A half step above gets us our minor sixth. And that same kind of thing, instead of going half steps down to get to major intervals, we're gonna go whole steps down to get to our minors. Again, so the C up to F would be perfect. So then down a whole step, that gets us to the E flat. There's your minor third, right? Same kind of thing, C up to uh, your C octave, whole step down gets us to our B flat. So another cool trick is now minor is the opposite of what the major trick was. So half step above perfect or whole steps below perfect. So again, let's do some practice now that we have some minor in there. So to start, let's if I give you the A, if I ordered a minor second up, right, you just think, oh, half step up, right? So that gets us from A to B flat because we want half step above the A. Uh, minor third, if we did this trick with the minor third, we go G uh, to C, we could C on the circle of fifths, order of flats and sharp. And then whole step below gives us to the B flats there. Uh, minor sevenths, I think this would really help us here. So A to then A flat again, then down a whole step. Now we have the G flat. I think that's a little easier than trying to count all the way up. This minor seventh method is the exact method I teach to help add uh, the seventh for dominant seventh chords or minor seven chords, right? This is the great way to differentiate between which are the major sevens and which ones are the minor sevens that you're adding to chords. And then minor six above D, right? So the D to the A, we would know it would be the perfect interval. And so then we want to go a half step above. Now we're at the B flat. So there's our minor interval. And this minor six is a perfect way to add the flat 13th or the flat six to chords. It works so well to just start with a fifth and go a half step higher. If you're saying this method doesn't really work for you and you'd rather use inversions like we did in the previous video for having sevens being twos and sixes being three, well, stick around for my third video in this series and I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that with inversions. So again, the majors are whole step above or half step below. The minors are half step above or whole step. So again, personally, I just memorize what the major rule is and then I know that minor is the opposite. And don't forget your free music theory survival guide. Just go to joshring.com slash free. Again, it has all of these intervals that we've been talking about and a whole lot more. You'll find it super helpful. And in the comments below, don't forget to let me know like what's been the most helpful for you. What trick and tips are you gonna take with you? Uh, thanks, have a great day.